I gave a kidney to my father when I was 20 years old, but that experience saved my life. You need to know that there's a wonderful life after taking the risk to give life. Many people have embarked upon this very unique journey. In Boston, an older sister named Kathy gave a kidney to her younger brother, Joe. 38 years later, they're both still thriving. In Los Angeles, a father named William gave his son Thomas a kidney. 50 years later, Thomas has one of the longest functioning live donor kidneys in U.S. history. Now consider Eugene Jr. and Eugene III from Cincinnati. Growing up, I was very close to my father. He coached me in everything, football, baseball, track, basketball. And yes, I've been told I resemble LeBron James, so don't laugh. <laughs> Sometimes he didn't even know the sport, yet he still found his way onto the coaching staff. I remember one year, I decided to beat the system right, so I ran cross country. I'm like, coach this dad. <laughs> sure enough, one day I'm at practice and I'm stretching, I see him walking down the breezeway, and I'm like, who keeps giving this man access? <laughs> he just always wanted to be where his son was. I can only recall him missing one game when I was a senior in high school. He was in the hospital. This was the first time I realized my father was very ill. He had stage four chronic kidney disease that had developed into end-stage renal disease. For three days a week, four hours a day, I watched dialysis rob my father of his vibrancy. Vibrancy can be defined as the state of being full of energy and life. He would come home completely exhausted, no energy and no life. It was determined that he needed a kidney transplant and although I was very young, I was courageous. I felt it was the very least I could do for all he had done for me. 30 million Americans have chronic kidney disease, but most don't even know they have it. It's often referred to as the silent disease because it often goes undetected until advanced stages. Symptoms like fatigue and swelling and changes in urina urination don't necessarily scream that something is wrong. One in three American adults are at risk for this disease and the two main causes are diabetes and high blood pressure and unfortunately my father had them both. <laughs> right now as we sit in Memorial Hall, there are nearly 100,000 Americans waiting for a life-saving kidney transplant. But unfortunately, Every day, 13 people will die because the normal wait time for a deceased donor is three to five years and my father just didn't have that kind of time. Travel back with me to the day of the surgery. The transplant was a huge success. Post-surgery, my father was a brand new man. If you've ever been sick, just one day of reprieve is worth it all. I was back at school and my mother called me. She told me that you know, my father had testified in church. He was beaming about how great he felt and how proud he was of his son. And this is why we should all take the risk to give of ourselves. We never know what effect our act of kindness can have on someone else's life. 41 days later, I was studying in my dorm and the phone rang. It was my dad. He had been admitted to the hospital over the weekend for a couple procedures. Hey, dad. What's up, son? Is everything good? Yeah, man, everything's fine. They're getting ready to let me out of here in the morning. That's great, Dad. I know you're ready to go home. Yeah, man, I am. Well, I'll let you go. I love you, man. Confused, I looked at the phone. Although we had a very close relationship, we had never really exchanged emotion. Uh, love you too, Dad. Goodbye, son. Bye, Dad. Something just didn't feel right, so I asked all my friends to leave and I went right to sleep. At 5.15 a.m., the phone rings again. This time, it's my mother. Eugene, he didn't make it. What? What do you mean he didn't make it? I just talked to him last night. I didn't even realize anything was wrong. What happened? In the middle of the night, blood clots had traveled to his lungs, killing him instantly. And just like that, my hero was gone. And this is the point where many of us get lost. Unexpected disappointment causes us to question the very meaning of life. What happens when you seek to do good, but bad happens? How do you cope with tragedy that was supposed to be triumph? 
I didn't realize it at the time, but my father was teaching me his final life lesson and creating a concept that I must share with you tonight. And that concept is intentional vibrancy. Post-surgery, I watched my father take back the vibrancy that dialysis had stolen. I watched this man live more vibrantly in 42 days than many of us live in 42 years. Why? Because he was given another chance to live. I realized at that point, it's not about the length of days, it's about the quality of days. He didn't spend his last 42 days dying, he chose to spend them living. And hence, the concept intentional vibrancy was born. I define this concept as consciously choosing to live each day full of energy in life. Notice, this is a conscious choice. You can either let life happen to you, or you can wake up every single day and choose to be intentionally vibrant. People have asked me, Eugene, was it worth it? Would you do it again if you knew your father was going to pass away in 42 days from a totally unrelated condition? And the answer is unequivocally yes. Whether it's 38 years for, for Joe in Boston or 50 years for Thomas in Los Angeles or 42 days for Eugene Jr. in Cincinnati, giving an organ is always worth the risk. See, I thought I was giving a kitty to save his life, and I may have. But that at the end of the day, I was the one who needed saving. We don't give to gain, but we certainly gain while giving. And had I not gone through that situation, I wouldn't choose intentional vibrancy every day. And without intentional vibrancy, I wouldn't be on this stage. I wouldn't be an author. I wouldn't be a songwriter. I wouldn't be a producer. I wouldn't be a rising executive. I wouldn't build a loving and thriving family. I wouldn't be chasing every single dream. I leave you with two challenges. Go down to your local BMV and become an organ donor this week. There are lives waiting on what you carry. The second challenge is this. Choose intentional vibrancy every day. When life infects you with negativity, tragedy, or disappointment, give yourself a shot of IV. Consciously choose to live each day full of energy and life. Go after every dream, seize every opportunity, take the risk to give of your time, your money, your effort, and yes, maybe even your kidney. I may have given my father 42 days, but he gave me the rest of my life. Thank you.